If there's one thing that I know, it's pro wrestling. So today I'm going to go through something that's near and dear to my hearts, and I'm guessing near and dear to quite a lot of your hearts too. The WWF Hasbro figures. Let's jump straight into it with Series 1. And what better place to start than with Hulk Hogan. Now these Hasbro figures to me were like a very seminal piece of my childhood. My entire childhood was kind of based all around these action figures. So I thought, why not just like break them down for you now? So we'll start off with Hulk Hogan, like I said. So there you go, you got your Hulk Hogan. Hulk rules top over here. This is now series one. As you can see, you've got the Gorilla Press Slam. This to me is a beautiful, beautiful figure. The only problem with it was these fingers used to break off. Now if I just stand up a little bit like this, you can see like these fingers are very brittle now. It's got a press slam action like that. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it properly, but there you go. As you can see, mine is very, very well played with. Now, unfortunately, not well played with recently because I just don't have the imagination for it anymore. I would love right now, instead of me to doing this video, to be playing with these figures like I did when I was like. Five, six, seven, teen. No, like five, six, seven years old. Like just be playing with these figures all the time. What I would do is I would sit in my room and I'd have the ring set up in my bed and I'd be playing with them there. And then to my left, I would have like some pay per view on VHS playing. And I'm sure a lot of you like, around my age have a very, very similar memory to this. But yeah, that's the Hulk Hogan. Like, that's a great figure to me. Now another legend is this guy here. The ultimate warrior. He's got his face paint. He's a, a jumper figure, so like when you push it down like this, his neck comes out, which I never used to like as a kid. I still don't really like it. Now these jumper style figures, they're not really for me. Whereas this style, like a gorilla press slam Hulk Hogan, if I can just put it all over the top of it there, that's much more my avenue. But this to me, it just seemed like obviously it was smaller, it seemed a bit more flimsy, a bit weaker not really what you want from a wrestler, you want a wrestling toy to be larger than life, don't you? Anyway, let's move on from the warrior to Jake the Snake Roberts. Now this figure here, I remember it vividly coming with a snake around the shoulders. And it was very rare to find these in like convenience stores in the UK, but I remember one Christmas, Jake the Snake being on sale in our local shop, we used to call it Welcome Stores, it was the local shop near where we grew up. And I wanted that figure, even though I already had it, I wanted my mum to buy me another one, and she didn't obviously, and I really wish in hindsight that like she had done that for me. Because like, because I already had one, I could have kept it in the box, and that would have been like worth way more now, but unfortunately, these are all unboxed. And like, you'll have a lot of collectors who are like mint in box collectors, but I, that for me goes completely against what wrestling figures were made for and they were made for playing with. Even if you don't want to play with them now as an adult, I still want them out of the box and I want to have them like, just just so you can touch them and like move them around and like use his move and stuff like that. This one still works but yeah man, Jake the Snake Roberts, another classic wrestler and oh, speaking of classics, look at this guy, Andre the Giant. Bit battered over here as you can see, but he's made to look bigger. Look at the size of his hands compared to the other wrestler's hands. Just to compare, Jake the Snake's hand like is like two fingers worth of Andre the Giant, so probably like on scale in that sense. And I remember buying this one as a kid from Moses Gate Car Boot. I remember this was like way after the time of Andre the Giant because I got into wrestling in 1992 when I saw Kamala and Donnie, two figures we're going to see coming up. When I saw them wrestling on TV with my parents and I was instantly hooked by this thing. Now I was a kid so I didn't know how to access it, didn't know how to find it. As the month started to roll by I started to see it in the, in the TV magazine and then started to see it advertised on TV. Started to get more into it that way. And I came way after the Andre the Giant era, but like I was saying, I was collecting the figures by then because my era was like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and those guys, but I was collecting the figures and I remember going to the car boot and some kid who was like a bit older, he obviously wasn't collecting them, wasn't interested anymore, his parents were selling them all and Andre the Giant, that was the first time I ever saw this figure, Andre the Giant, and I picked it up that day. 
and another one up in fact there's a lot of these that I picked up that day these aren't the same ones some of them are the same ones that I had when I was a kid and some of them I've re-bought since lockdown started I've got way back into my childhood joys like you would have seen in my last two videos the Pokemon videos one where I unboxed uh, the Vivid Voltage Blister Bo Booster Box and one where I unboxed my childhood Pokemon cards out of the tin for the first time in 15 years I've got hands on them Anyway, these Hasbro figures, this was the first thing when lockdown started that I thought, you know what, I'm going to collect these because I kind of reverted back to like my childhood self in lockdown, like I'm, I'm just, I'm sat at home all the time, I'm working from home, I don't have to do with the, the adult life, let's do stuff that I enjoy and what did I enjoy as a kid, collecting these toys and look at this Akeem here, I think there's a bit of a breakdown here, I bought it off some guy on Facebook. Not a great condition one, but he did give me a good deal on it, to be fair. It's a placeholder. Hopefully, I'll get a better condition one one day that doesn't have that crap. But again, this is one of the figures from back in the day that I got from the car boot in Moses Gate. Now, these lads, I got these two as well. I don't know if I can get them both on screen together, but there you go. Can you just about, can you just about see those if I, if I move that there? Smash and Axe, the demolition. This Smash, this is one that I've bought again in lockdown because my childhood one, this arm broke off. See this arm with this, this elbow pad. Smash used to have his elbow pad on his bicep, which is like a different thing that he used to do. And these to me were proper cool looking figures. I, I, I understand now why people were fans of Kiss in like 70s and the 80s. I always thought Kiss's music wasn't that great, it wasn't that into him, but to see that see this like iconography, the way they look, it's so like striking and like visually pleasing that I can see why the gimmick of Kiss really sold itself to like a lot of music fans at that time. Now, that's the smash that I bought recently. Now I wanna really focus on this one because this will give you a great look into my psyche as a child. I used to destroy these figures. I didn't just used to play with them and bash them together as much as I could. I used to bite their fingers off. As you can see here, this would have had all 10 fingers when I got it. It's got eight left. I left the thumbs. For some reason, I didn't bite the thumbs off. Obviously not a thumb sucker. Bit the, bit the fingers off. I don't know why. The nose. I'm bitting the nose off him as well. Like, again, I don't understand why. I was probably eight years old. Treating him like a dog toy, just chewing it. And another thing I used to do, you see this down there. I used to scratch off the bottom of the foot with my teeth, I like, just like chew it off. Again, I don't really know why, but yeah, this is a really, really mistreated axe. I need to get another one, improve this one so that I have a better collection, but for now, it'll do. Again, another one that I mistreated. Now, I remember that what happened with this one. This is a Macho Man Randy Savage Series 1 Hasbro, yeah? It's kind of rare nowadays and it's worth about 25 quid the correct value will be up there thing or maybe up there i don't know which side it will be on well you'll figure it out i'll figure it out we'll figure it out together matching man randy savage went to wcw in my when i was about 10. so no a bit early but when i was about 10 he was in the nw1 he was wearing all black so as you can see i've like coloured this in with black marker pen i try to get it off with like nail varnish remover and turps and stuff like that which really really not working it's not in great condition again look at the feet scratched them off this is definitely one of my childhood figures and one of the ones i would have got in that bulk lot from that car boot back in the day i'm looking for another one of these if anyone's got one hit me up now this guy the million dollar man ted dibiossi this is the first one of these figures that we've been through that i never had when i was a kid i had to pick this one up as an adult for the very first time Love this figure, it's got the million dollar belt, but like I say, never had this one as a kid, and it's very similar to one of the later ones that we got. Now we've got the big boss man. This one I actually got in a lot like a few days ago. Some guy on Facebook was trying to shift a load of figures. I thought I'm gonna pick them up because the ones that I need, I can put them in my collection. The ones I don't need, I can flip them and get rid of them that way. And that would kind of fund buying the rest of them. But yeah, this is the fat big boss man as it was known as the plump big boss man which is kind of weird because like they made him later on which i'll show you and he got a bit slender but this is this is the original one i think it might have come with a night stick again i don't have it anymore again i never would have bought this one originally when it came out i would have got this second hand somewhere like a car boot something like that 
Another missed item, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Now, again, another jumper. Don't like the look of it, don't like the style of it. And it might be the first one, really, in this bunch where we've had the same kind of figure twice because every one of these other ones kind of have, has their own look. But these two are very similar. In fact, Andre and Akeem are quite similar, but these two are quite similar, aren't they? Brutus Beefcake, again, it's a jumper style, so I never liked playing with this figure. I just, I, I just never did. To me, this is the one that always used to get left in the bottom of the toy box when it was Royal Rumble time. This one was getting left in again. Feet perfect, no real too bad marks, there's something there, but besides that, this is one that, again, I picked up in lockdown. And you can pick this up for as cheap as about £2.50 nowadays, which is actually cheaper than what it cost originally. And here we go, Ravishing Rick Rude. I would have liked a better deco on the pants, because it's quite basic, this one. Ravishing Rick Rude was known for having like a very like flamboyant gear with like putting his his opponents like wives on his crotch area and stuff like that like spray painted it was kind of cool looking gear but that was that was season one done and dusted don't know if i have every single one but that's season one now look at this this is an upgrade on the ultimate warrior season two ultimate warrior looks way better looks larger than life you can get all the six packing and that he looks massive way better than this crappy little jumper doesn't he this to me is the better one now i picked this one up during lockdown it's got the poop nose where like it's gone a bit brown over there Besides that, it's not too bad. I don't mind it too much. Then we have very, very basic looking one there. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Not one of my favourites, but I remember getting Hacksaw Jim Duggan one Christmas, funnily enough. It's just been Christmas, or depending on when you're watching this, when this was posted, it was just Christmas. I remember getting this one as a child for Christmas and being really, really like happy with it and it came with a 2x4 I remember that year I got a few different figures maybe Jake the Snake was one of the ones I got at that time but I remember vividly getting this one probably because they were a bit cheap at the time they were a bit out of run they weren't the, the, the best ones in the line because again I had come along a bit late this was probably about Christmas 1993 when I got these but again very vivid memories and very great memories of getting this figure then one of the better looking ones of the lot the Honky Tonk Man, just the way that he's wearing this all-in-one suit looks fantastic to me. He's got that kind of Elvis impersonator kind of character. He ripped my mate off when we met him at WrestleMania a few years ago. If you want to see that, go check out my Day in the Life vlogs that are also on this channel. Uh, worth checking out to see how the, uh, the Honky Tonk Man operates and people of his ilk. Now we have a tag team, because well, I'll say the tag team actually. Let's go to another million dollar man again. This one came with the belt as well, but I don't have the belt for this. I got the belt for that one, picked up in lockdown. Don't have the belt for this one. This is the basic Ted DiBiase that I had about three or four times as a kid. I had multiple versions of this exact figure. To me, it's maybe the nicest looking one of the bunch. He's got that like mint green suit on that just like oozes money and like just real heel heat. It's a nice looking figure, this isn't it. Now we've got a different variant of the Macho Man. This time it's the Macho King Randy Savage and it came with a crown and a scepter that goes in this hand and that's why there's a hole in this hand. The knee pad's a bit worn down. This is one that I had as a child but I lost it, lost track of it and then I had to buy it again in lockdown. So again, one of the lockdown pickups. Not too expensive, you can get them quite cheap. Obviously in a better condition, they're worth a bit more, but you can get this one quite cheap if you really want one. Now, we had the demolition before, but Axe was getting a bit older, he was getting a bit, getting a bit more injury prone, so they brought in this young guy, Brian Adams, who played the character Crush, and he had this demolition figure. Now, he joined demolition, he had this demolition figure. I have a real soft spot for this figure because I used to see this in like the old magazines, again I used to go to the car boot a lot and I used to pick up the magazines and they would have the old adverts in there. And, and I don't, like I mean at the time they were old magazines, they were two or three years old when I was buying these magazines. And I used to see this in the advert and I always wanted it but I never saw it anywhere in real life until I bought this for about £10 on eBay very recently. It's actually worth a bit more than £10, the real price will be up there. And yeah, this one to me is a really lovely figure. They did come with masks eventually, so I think in this set it came as a tag team, him and Smash, and they both came with master demolition masks, which again I've never owned, and I think they go for quite a lot of money if you have those original masks. Another legend, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Great figure, I hated the fact that he's wearing the kilt because you can't really play with it properly. These fingers break very easily. I can't tell you how many that I've seen on eBay over lockdown where the fingers are just broken off. 
not really a great figure in terms of longevity if you're going to play with it and not really a great one to play with either so not one of my favourites from my childhood times and his enemy Superfly Jimmy Snooker I don't want to spend too much time talking about Jimmy Snooker he did some things that are very questionable in his life you can go see the Dark Side of the Ring documentary on Jimmy Snooker but for me not really a great guy figure it's okay it actually suits him this one a little bit because he is a jumper he used to he jumped from the top rope that time, that famous Mick Foley story where he saw him at Madison Square Garden jump off the top of the cage. He probably did it a few times there, but they really I iconised that moment. But yeah, Superfly Jimmy Snooker looks like a decent figure, but again, one of the ones I had as a kid, I lost it eventually and then had to rebuy it. Another Hulk Hogan variant and another figure that I didn't like playing with as a kid because he's got this bear hug thing already. You can't really play with it. I mean, now it's great for figure photography is all over the internet and stuff like that and you can take great figures of him bear hugging someone else like let's let's get ultimate warrior in there look at that he's giving him a right old bear hug attacking him and all that well it looks like he's attacking him it looks a little bit like that uh, meme that went around but yeah the, these Hasbro WWF Hasbro figures are amazing to me and, and even though this one isn't one of the ones that I like playing with as a kid and I remember breaking this arm off specifically and having that still in my parents house in my in my toy box because when again when lockdown happened I dug out them Pokemon cards this is the first thing that I dug out was these Hasbro figures and that's why in that video when I say this is the first time I've seen them in 15 years because that's legit every time I would go back to my parents house and I would want to see anything from when I was a kid It'd be these Hasbro figures, it wouldn't be my Pokemon cards, it wouldn't want to be my PlayStation games, nothing like that, my old football shirts, it would be this. I've managed to take all that now, but yeah, the, these to me are the, are the key thing. Now we've got more tag teams, we've got the Rockers, another pair of jumpers, another pair that I didn't really like playing with. I love the fact that we were getting tag teams, more tag teams to go with Demolition. Demolition looked the part, they looked the same. Bossman and Akeem, they were a tag team at one point. They don't look the same, do they? They don't really look like they go together, but the Rockers, this set here, looks perfect like they go together. The first Shawn Michaels figure in this Hasbro line, the first of three that will eventually come out, and my least favourite one. Then we've got these guys, the Bushwhackers. I remember as a kid losing this one. Now, I think, if I'm correct, that this one's Butch and this one's Luke. All through my childhood, I thought it was the opposite way around. I thought this was Luke and this was Butch. All the way through my childhood, but no, I think... Do you know what? I've absolutely confused myself, right? This one's Luke and this one's Butch, I think. Do you know what? I've absolutely done myself there. I cannot remember which one's which. Either way, these look lovely. The way that they're wearing the same gear, it's just fantastic. Again, another beautiful, beautiful tag team set. Let's move on to series three, which I don't think that was in series two. Right. So, oh, we start off with a man again, Hulk Hogan. This one to me is my favourite Hulk Hogan toy. This is the one that I played with the most when I was a kid. And I remember my one being completely destroyed. This one you can see like the writing up here and the Hulkster rules here. I remember chewing this, this hand here and it being in a really crap condition. And eventually I did the same as the Macho Man, drew all over with pen so I can make an NWO version. Next up we've got this, which looks a lot like the Macho King that we saw before, which is here. But if you turn the Macho King over, you can see on the board it says Macho King. If we turn this one over, Macho Man. Now, I had both of these as a kid. I remember being sat in Cheetah Mill in my cousin's living room, playing with these two figures and being like, turning them over and being like, looking on the board and being like, wait a second. It says Macho King and Macho Man, what's going on here? I thought it must be a misprint, I didn't know what was going on. Coming to be an adult, I realised it was two different series, they just did, made a very slight variation to it and released it again, they made this one as the Macho Man. Kept the hole in the hand for the scepter, even though this one didn't come with a scepter, they were bugbearing me, but yeah, very, very cheeky to get away with that. But it took me ages to relocate that, because like I say, I lost that one as a kid. Here's another tag team that goes together. Not really good released as a tag team set but we got Typhoon and Earthquake look at that Typhoon and Earthquake this Earthquake is the original one I had as a kid terrible condition this Typhoon is one that I've got more as an adult 
I'm really looking for a new earthquake because that one is in such bad condition. I want a better one, you know, to like upgrade it. Then we've got this guy, Coco Beware, mocked a few years ago when he entered the Hall of Fame and a lot of people said that he didn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. They thought that other people should be in it. I think Coco Beware is pretty cool, to be honest with you. And a genuine tough guy from the world of wrestling, apparently. Here is another edition of Brutus the Band Beefcake. Now, we had this one before. Now, this one, I managed to like locate this one very easily as a child because kids didn't want to play with this one. I actually like the pants he's wearing. I think it's pretty cool, pretty cool gear. But this one was harder to locate, and I think I got this with that original bunch, like I was saying, with that Andre the Giant and the, the Demolition and all those people. I think that's when I actually got this one for the first time. And here is the Slim Big Boss Man. So before we had the plump one, when he was a bad guy, they made him a bit more plump. When he became a good guy, they made him like this, and this one definitely did have the nightstick that came with it. And I remember where I lost my nightstick. I lost the WWF. Hasbro Big Boss Man Nightstick in that very same cousin's living room in Cheetah Mill when I was sleeping over one night, I was playing with my, my toys early in the morning and it slipped down the side of the sofa and I could never find it ever again. Never ever found that again and I never never found one since, nowhere else. So I'm really looking for one of them. If you can find me one, I'd appreciate that at a reasonable price because they're quite exp for some reason, well I know the reason, the accessories with this Hasbro line are so hard to find now that like they're way expensive if you've got the originals. There's a lot of reprints and stuff like that with 3D printers, but the originals are really hard to find. This is Greg the Hammer Valentine. One that, again, I didn't really like playing with too much, but it's an okay figure actually, just for some reason. Like, Greg Valentine was just not one of my favourite wrestlers. He was one of the ones that I, I never really had too much of a feel for, probably because he never had a singles pay-per-view match from the era that I was watching wrestling so to me he was very easily like discarded in the pile when it came to putting together my, my dream matches and stuff like that and then this guy Mr. Perfect's Kurt Henning not my original one because it's in a nicer condition it could be in a better condition but hey what can you do I'm picking these up as cheap as possible during lockdown but it is Mr. Perfect's Kurt Henning love this figure now let's move on to series four where we really start to pick up we have my favorite wrestler of all time right here brett the hitman heart with the pink heart here there was another one that came out with the purple heart that's a lot harder to find i don't think i've ever seen one in person this is a great figure a lot of the times you'll see it where the um the sunglasses are fading but it, when I originally started recollecting them during lockdown, this was my goal, was to get one of these. That's all I wanted, and I found one for about 10 quid on eBay, and I was going to buy it, then it went, it sold, and then it took me a while to find one again, but again, I eventually tracked one down. I think I tracked this one down on my Facebook Marketplace. I bought one on eBay, but again, the glasses are scratched, like I said, that's how you get them usually. I sold that one on when I bought this one, so I'm, I'm kind of breaking even on that, but yeah, this is a lovely, lovely figure to me. And again, I had this when I was a kid. Somebody stole it! I don't know which one of my childhood friends stole it, but one of you stole it. And my friends when we were kids, we used to love wrestling, but the only ones who used to collect them figures really was like, I was mid-level, I used to collect. My mate Gary used to collect them a bit less than me, and my mate Sam used to collect them more than me. Sam moved eventually and took all his figures with him. But yeah, someone took my hair, my Bret Hart. Here's a British Bulldog. Now, this is another one of the iconic ones for me. Growing up in the UK, you look to the British Bulldog. He's one of the big, big legends of pro wrestling. To me, this is one that I would love to get in mint condition. This one's a bit dirty on the legs. And I noticed before, state of these fingers, like, I don't know if this is one of mine or one that I got in a bulk from somewhere, but not a great condition one, but such a lovely, lovely figure. I would love to have one in mint condition. This would be one of the... Excuse me, one of the rare ones that I would love to actually have a minute in box, just to be absolutely perfect. Then again, I probably would open it just to put it on my shelf. Talking about legends, let's go for it. The man who's on the thumbnail, along with Hulk Hogan, we have The Undertaker. Retired recently after a 30 year career in the ring. Unbelievable. Next up we have got... Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, another one of the figures that I hated playing with when I was a kid because of these fiery tassels that are all over him. I remember I tried to chew this off mine when I was a kid. I think I chewed these off. And it had something that went here, which was, which was like a bigger version of this, it was like a flame that went over. Not a fan of it at all. Too cartoony for me, this figure. 
They really went all out on the cartoon aspects of it. It looks a bit more like a Ninja Turtle to me, but yeah, Ricky the Dragon's theme, but that's just how it is, I suppose. Sergeant Slaughter, one of the very first wrestlers to have a figure, I believe, because they based the original G.I. Joe figures, I think, off Sergeant Slaughter. I may be wrong, you may be able to correct me, but yeah, Sergeant Slaughter was very much involved in the G.I. Joe line. This isn't the one I had when I was a kid. It's been bitten on the finger here by someone, not me. I, well, I would have loved it to be me, because I would have chewed the whole thing right off when I was a kid, probably. But this would have been one of the ones that I picked up during lockdown for a bit cheaper. Again, WWF Hasbro's, I cannot get away from them. I just When I see them, I just have to buy them up because I, lo I just love them. And I compare them to ones I got, flip them on again, and then just keep rotating it through that way, keep my collection fresh. Now we have, another, this is a hard set to track down perfect condition. The Legion of Doom. This one looks so great as, as toys. They look beautiful as toys. And this is very, very much in 1992. I like can remember the first feeling seeing Lisa of Doom and how cool it looks but because he got all these spikes it's hard to track one down that's got all the spikes and got all the spikes still black as you can see animals have gone red this one's broken off Hawk so these two are two that I picked up during lockdown probably like they're in decent condition not the best of conditions but again I could do with really improving these ones but such such toyetic and beautiful Hasbro toys here Next up in the WWF Hasbro line, we have another tag team. We have the Nasty Boys. Again, I love the look of these. In fact, I love this as a t-shirt. I saw it in WWE shop recently and I thought, should I get it? I don't really need it, so I'll probably leave it to one side, especially because it's locked down. Where am I going? I'm not going anywhere to wear it. I'm just going to sit around the house wearing it, so I don't need it. Got enough clothes to sit around the house. Not enough figures to just sit around the house. And these two... Fantastic looking to me. I remember when I was a kid going to Pakistan on holiday and dropping these off like the top tier of a house onto the bottom and just breaking them just for pure entertainment. Like that's the stage that I got to with these with these figures. Is like I played with them so much that eventually I was just like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna start breaking them. That will be really fun for me. Next up, oh, another one with broken fingers. The Warlord. You can see there. Look, look, only two fingers on this hand. Full one on that hand. But again. Great looking figure to me. I love the way that the Warlord looks, but I oh, just absolutely ruined it. What people used to do with this one back in the day was cut all this stuff off with a knife and make a Stone Cold Steve Austin out of him, but Warlord's a proper powerhouse. I actually like playing with this figure, but the Warlord wasn't a great character, let's, let's be completely honest with ourselves. But someone who was, and another one with broken fingers off, look at that. Macho Man Randy Savage. I hated playing with this figure. I want to put that out there. All these flary tassels over here, hated it. Looks beautiful now as an adult, I can really appreciate how good this looks with the pink gear underneath, the white jacket, the yellow tassels, the green on the hat, everything's going off, it is popping. Even says, ooh yeah, down here. But, terrible to play with, you just can't play with it. Like, these two when I was a kid, you could play with them, you could do like the, oh he tries to punch him, he's ducked him, he's ch chock slam. But with the tassels and all that, can't really do all that. The Mountie. This, again, I hate the ones that are wearing the hats. I hate the ones that are wearing the entrance gear and all that. Just give me the regular wrestling gear. That's what I want to see them in. But I suppose you've got to mix it up. And this looks a lot better than without it. But to play with, not a great figure to play with. Virgil. One of my childhood ones, I painted the legs white. Because the vest of this was white, I painted the vest of the legs white. So I make him like, because he was in NWO black and white as well. So to make that all like the white style of the NWO black and white. Nose, bit off, feet under, scratched out. I mean, Virgil, it's an okay figure to play with, but like, in fact, I think, I'll be honest with you. I think I stole this off my friend Sam that I mentioned earlier on in the video. Oops. Here's one that I got very recently. And by very recently, I mean yesterday. Psycho Sid. My mate Johnny, he saw my post that I just bought another person's ha uh, WWF Hasbro collection and he went, I've got loads of them in my shed, do you want to have a look? So I was like, definitely. So went round, COVID compliant and all that, had a look and this is one of the ones that I needed. Didn't have this figure since I was a kid and I remember cutting his head off as a kid. Not cutting it off, but like he said, just fell off as a kid and like, what can you do? But 
As an adult, I really appreciate what a good looking figure this is. Very, very basic in terms of the blue, black and the white, but I mean, that's what Sid was like. It just, it really accurately like shows Sid and there's his uh, move that still works. Next up, we've got another one wearing a hat and another one that I got off Johnny because mine, I broke the hat off as a kid because I, like I say, I hated the hats. But it had this colour underneath, not his skin colour, so his scalp became like a grey and I mean, it's pretty useless from there. But yeah, I replaced it with this. Nice little hat. Decent figure all in all. If this was in mint condition, I would really like this as a figure to play with. Not that much to be honest with you. IRS. I remember vividly getting this figure as a kid. I got this figure from Argos in Bolton. And I think they were £3.50 or five quid somewhere in that range. I remember my mum and my dad went down to, to Argos to get me this as a little treat. And I've been really excited for it to be playing with this one in my room because this was a new figure to my fig fed. And IRS may be the very first figure I ever got brand new. Maybe, I'm not too sure. I've, I've got my original one at home still, and this is one that I've rebought. It's very white hair, a lot better condition, this one. Again, not one of the great ones to play with, but one of the ones that was good to play with was the Anvil. I really enjoyed the Anvil as a kid. One of my favourite figures. I love the pants, love the fact that he's part of the Heart Foundation. Top, top figure to love. Rick the Model Martel, you got him in all pink. He could have done with a bit of an accessory, something like that, to jazz him up a little bit, but exactly what I was asking for, give us the rest as an entrance gear, and that's what Rick Martel is. Nice looking figure. Then you've got my original Nature Boy Ric Flair. My grandma bought me this one from Bolton Market. Yes, Bolton Market used to sell WWF Hasbro figures. Not sure how expensive it was, but yeah, I'd never seen this one before. She bought me the Ric Flair from there. By this point, he'd already left the WWF, but I absolutely loved it. Then we've got the Berserker. This came with a cape, if I remember correctly, and it had silver horns up here, which I bit off as a kid. What an idiot I was. Completely wrecked it. I think I drew like Tipex all over him, but yeah, this is my WF Berserker. Then we got the Voodoo Man, Papa Shango. I actually didn't mind playing with this one because the hat is a bit up and down, not very like wide to the side, so I didn't mind playing with this one. And obviously, he became Papa Shango, uh, became the Godfather later on, so you can transition into that. And yep, my childhood one, as you can see there, and I've chewed the fingers off. Obviously you have Adam, why wouldn't you? Tatanka, another one of the ones I remember getting maybe that Christmas time with the Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I remember getting the Tatanka and being very, very happy with it. This is not my childhood one, a lot better condition this one. Tito Santana, the El Matador. I remember getting this figure from Asda in Farmworth. Right, from Asda in Farmworth. After I went to the mosque one day as a treat for going to the mosque. Hated, hated doing anything after school hours, but they got me this Tito Santana, so I suppose I gotta be a bit happy about it. Repo Man, another of the ones I had as a kid, I broke it as a kid, bought it very recently, now have it as an adult, very, very happy with that. And he was also the same guy who played Demolition Smash, so. You can't really see any similarities in how they look, but yeah, that's the same guy. Is that the, same, the only person who's got two different gimmicks in the entire set? I think very possibly. Texas Tornado, I used to use this in my Triple H. It's supposed to spin around. This, this still spins a little bit, not bad. Um, yeah, decent figure. Kamala, one of the rarest ones. If it's got a moon on the belly, there's like 10, 16 ever made, like one case of them, and that was it. Don't know why they have three stars on him, but yeah, that was it. And uh, used to remind me of my uncle a little bit, Kamala. And like I say, he was the very first wrestler I saw on TV that I remember. My favourite wrestler when I was just getting into wrestling, Razor Ramon. I used to love this figure. Another one of the ones that got stolen off me as a kid. He's supposed to have a gold chain, this one doesn't. I bought this one off my mate Jordan um, over lockdown and thank you very much Jordan, really appreciate that one. Sean Michaels, one that I got recently, he's supposed to have proper sunglasses, one that's been scratched out, the arms are a bit broken, but I used to love this figure and other ones that got stolen as a kid. Kona Crush, now this 
It's one, and in fact, this guy has got three different gimmicks in, in the Hasbro line. He's got this, he's got Evil Crush, he's got Demolition Crush, so maybe it's just the Demolition who've got uh, their own different ones, but yeah. Decent figure, all in yellow and all that, but not a great one. Rocket Owen Hart, another one of the figures that I originally stole from Sam as a kid. I'm sorry, Sam, I was a terrible friend. I was just a bit of a screw. I don't know why I used to do that. It's like a five year old just jealous, like, oh, I can do with Owen Hart in my fig fed. Put him in my pocket, that's Sam one more. He's got 40 figures. He only plays them when I'm around, round, I think, so yeah, fine. Wasn't fine, I shouldn't have never done it, but hey, you can't go back, can you? Nails, famous story with Nails in the WWF. He got sacked for pinning Vincent Mann to a wall and demanding more money. As a couple of the other wrestlers like, stood by the door and kind of blocked it off, like, yeah, we're not gonna do anything about this. I think the Berserker was one of them guys. Now we're getting into it. Yo Kozuna, look at that. Remember getting this brand new, ripping out the packet, feeling how heavy it was as a kid. That was a heavy figure as a kid. Got a really, really itchy tip of the nose at the moment. I apologise. Bit of a rare one that I tracked down recently. Undertaker with the dark hair. I had this as a kid. Got stolen off me as a kid. Got it again now. Got it at an absolute steal. Won't say what I got it for, but this... It's probably worth, well, you can see what it's worth right there. Decent, decent amount, way, way more than I paid for this figure. Great figure, great figure. Another one that I got in the same set as that, that I had as a kid, got stolen. This Brett the Hitman heart. Love this Brett. Got a bit of a wear on the sunglasses up here. Not great condition in that sense, but I love this Brett heart. Like this for me, front and centre of my collection, there's got to be, <clears throat> if I was to put these on display, which eventually one day I might do, Brett's going to be right in front of the centre of that collection. And again, another one in that set that I got that day. At a steal. Never had this one as a kid. Don't think I ever saw it in person as a kid. The blue Mr. Perfect, which goes alongside the yellow Mr. Perfect. Very, very similar looking figure. All they changed was the front of the singlet because the back there still has the yellow triangle. Very, very good looking figure, that one. Really like it and got it for a steal. Lex Luger, the narcissist, one of the ones we always wanted if Hasbro was to do like another line, another another series of them was the USA Lex Luger. We didn't get that, they've got the narcissist, decent looking figure. We got the USA one eventually in the Mattel Elite line. Bam Bam Bigelow, one of the most strikingly looking wrestlers to me, one of the ones I used to like looking at because Sensory Overload, he tattooed fire on his head. Just, just, just try and process that information. This man is like a 22 year old tattooed fire on his head. And one of his rivals, one of the very first, uh, the, the very first wrestler I saw on TV, along with Kamala. Kamala versus Doink. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. Doink the clown. One thing I'm missing the story I've got about this one is I remember my, my mum and Sam's daddy lived on the end of our street. They both bought us these Doink the Clowns when it came out and for about five quid or something like that. And I remember a few doors down, my mate Alan lived, I mentioned him in my Pokemon videos, and outside Alan's house was a broken Doink the Clown on the floor. My mum went mad. She was bollock. She was really, really shouting at me, yeah? It wasn't my Doink the Clown, it was Sam's Doink the Clown. She's like, oh, I had actually cut the hair off all of mine, being an idiot, thinking, oh, it'll grow back, it's a toy. Like, why would they make it so I could break it? I completely ruined it the first day I had it, but at least I didn't break it, so shoot, she was kind of alright with me after that. Now these ones, oh these ones are a bit rare to find now, worth an okay amount as you can see there, but this is Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase. In his ring gear, we had him before him in his outer ring gear, now we've got him in his ring gear. This is the one that I used to play with, I didn't used to play with those ones, so this is my original one from when I was a kid. Then we have the Steiner Brothers, these ones were hard to track down as kids. Hard to track down now as well, but I had them both. I don't know where my mum bought them from, whether it was Asda or, or Argos, all the years. But yeah, she got me Rick Steiner and Scott Steiner, two fantastic looking figures, and two that, for these wrestling toys, are worth an okay amount. Then we have Samu. I remember my uncle in Cheetah Mill getting me this one. I don't know if that camera's just stopped. It looks like it might have just stopped on me. Let's. Let's try and pop it back up. Okay, I've, I've, all, I've got the camera running again. It should be there. This Samu, I remember him getting it me from Argos in Cheetah Mill or in Manchester. 
Maybe that same trick when I lost that night stick, but yeah, I remember him getting me this one. I wanted Fatu as well, the other head shrinker, but never got it. Fatu stayed in the WWF, Samu didn't, so I really could have done the Kiva Samu, but obviously I, I used him as Fatu for uh, the rest of my, uh, my fig playing days. The penultimate figure, my childhood Marty Gennetti. Same build as his former tag team partner, Shawn Michaels. I loved how they did that. They kept the same build for, for Marty Gennetti. They coloured in the wrist tape. That's one of the problems with some of these figures. They didn't colour in the wrist tapes like in this kind of style, like the Macho Man one from earlier on. But yeah, I loved this figure as a kid. Played with it a lot. And the final one, one I never had as a kid, and another one that I got from my mate Jordan during lockdown, Giant. Gonzalez never saw it anywhere as a kid, never saw it in real life up until Jordan sold it to me and he sold it to me at a fair price to be fair to him. Love this figure, love having it in my collection, especially because I never had it back in the day. But yeah, that's my run through of my WWF Hasbro collection. What do you guys think? Is there some missing from my collection that I should have? The big one off the top of my head is the Ultimate Warrior. There's a purple Ultimate Warrior that I had as a kid no longer have it. I think that's the only one that I had as a kid that I don't have anymore. There's obviously your Dusty Rhodes, your Evil Crush, your Smoking Guns, the, the higher ticket items, the In The Bag Mail Away Undertaker, uh, Hulk Hogan and Bret Hart, the Black Shawn Michaels, the Purple Razor and one, the, some of those figures that I really do need to get and I will be looking to track down and if I ever find them at a good enough price I will cop them. But until then, this is my collection. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've watched this far, please do me a favour. Mash that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Drop me a comment down below. Which is your favourite WWF Hasbro figure? I want to know that. Did you collect these as a child? If so, do you still have your collection? Did you sell it back then? Are you going to sell it now? Let me know in the comments. Did you do that? Hey, do you want to hit me up and they want me to help you sell them? I can find the right prices for you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you can give me a good deal on one that I don't have I can do you a good deal and help you sell them I'm being really really cheesy salesman at the end nah nah if anyone does want a helping hand to sell the ones I'll, I'll help them and I will give you a fair price if, if there is one that I need because I'm wanting to fill this collection out anyway that's been enough from me and well thanks you've been a lovely lovely viewing audience as always thank you very very much for watching and I'll see you soon with more videos